Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Now it's the 6th of December today and it's getting very cold. There was quite a thick layer of frost on the ground this morning so it's starting to feel a little bit more like Christmas now. Um, but I thought I'd do a video of a quick update of my allotment and also an update of my dad's allotment because you haven't seen an update in quite some time and even though not a lot's happening I thought you'd all like to see what's been going on. Now not a lot has really been growing or happening on the allotment um, over the past month just because it's been too cold obviously for anything to grow. Um, but things have been happening. I've put the tulips in for one thing. I did that in a previous video. Um, but there's about 55 tulips in that trough so hopefully it will look really nice once they come out. They haven't started to show yet but um, obviously it's still quite cold and hopefully next year when it starts to warm up a little bit they start peeking through. So the trough's all done, nothing's happening with the strawberries, I really need to weed the strawberry beds actually. Um, but it's just been pushed to the side because there's been other things that, that needed doing before the weeding and actually I've been letting the whole allotment go and I do feel really bad but I've just been so busy with filming things and and just doing things for my blog that <laughs> the weeding has just been pushed to one side for now so so I'm going to spend the next week or two weeks really really weeding and really just going for it um, but another area that's been been happening what I've been doing is the chicken area so I've managed to lay this area out flat I wanted to get it as flat as possible just so that the rain can come down and the frost can just hopefully just settle the soil and then what I will do is I will put some paving slabs down and then the chicken coop can move up because the chicken coop's all done now that's at home just waiting to come up here so once the ground's been settled and once the paving slabs are up I will get the chicken coop up here and that'll be really interesting really exciting actually and this area over here this needs to be flattened a little bit because that's where some flowers are going what I've done is there were some weeds in a bag over in the fruit cage and I just bought them over because the idea is just to bury them and hoping that they don't grow back again <laughs> there's there's no perennial ones there there's, n there's nothing like binary there or anything so I'm just going to bury them there and hopefully that'll bring that bit of ground up there level with this bit because it, it slopes this way a little bit so hopefully it will make that all level um, but I'm really excited about the chickens I just can't wait I um, mean that's all for this area the archway is empty nothing's happening with the archway um, so I'll just show you the the main area where things are still growing and where things still look interesting so this is the area of the allotment where things still look a little bit interesting because <laughs> over there it's a little bit bare and a little bit boring so far um, but this is where all everything's happening this is the brassica bed now I ate the last of the red cabbages the other day so they've all gone they weren't really big but they were enough for us so they were perfect really um, and all the nasturtiums have died off now so I really need to dig that area over because it looks a right state um, but I will do that over the next couple of weeks hopefully so what's left in the brassica bed are two rows of flower sprouts which are are growing rather well I mean there's a few that are quite small um, and I've had a little bit of a problem with white fly this year and me and my dad have both have both come across this white fly and it's just been crazy this year 
there's so much of it um and we didn't know what to do with it and i mean i don't i don't think it's very har- i don't think it's very harmful but obviously we clean it off when we eat it um and the ca- it's been um the white fly's been on the kale as well so i don't know actually the frost has managed to kill it off now so maybe it was just because we had quite a warm summer and quite a mild autumn um, but it's been fine because we've obviously washed it off with salty water. It's just a little bit of a pain, that's all. Um, I have actually haven't touched any of the Cavallo Nero kale because my dad's been growing it. We've just been eating his. Um, so chickens would have been really helpful this year <laughs> because they probably would have eaten the um, kale as well. But I might try and make like a kale soup or something. Sounds interesting, so I might give that a go. Um, but there are a few flower sprouts growing. I don't know if there will be any ready for Christmas. Um, but um, it will be interesting to see what they taste like. I'm quite excited to try them actually because they're just like tiny little cabbages. And they look really nice as well. So hopefully they're nice. So next door to the brassica cage, I put one row of broad beans in. Overwintering broad beans. So hopefully they'll be ready um, early spring next year they haven't come up yet but I only put them in a couple of weeks ago so it has been really cold next door to the broad beans there's one row of carrots now they're ready to pull but obviously I'm just leaving them in the ground until until we're ready to use them because they're perfectly fine and next door to that one row there are two rows of small carrots now they will be overwintered and I actually did that last year I overwintered a couple of row of carrots I put them in in late August. I put these ones in in late August as well. Um, but last year, the ones I put in August, they were ready about February time, and they weren't they weren't relatively big. I mean, they were like six inches, five inches, um, and quite skinny and spindly. But they were delicious, and I mean, we were getting carrots in February, so it was lovely. So hopefully, they'll be ready around February. Next door to that, there's one row of garlic and they haven't popped up yet, but like I said, I only planted them about two weeks ago. And then there are two rows of Swiss chard left because I had to pull two rows of Swiss chard up to make room for the garlic. Um, That's doing really, really great. I'm so obsessed with the Swiss chard. Next door to the Swiss chard, there's two rows of leeks. Now, I pulled up a leek the other day and it was perfect (laughs) it was really nice it wasn't really big but it was delicious and it it was really nice Um, I've only managed to pull up one so far but I really really want to make some leek and parsnip soup so I'll probably be using a few of them at the weekend just to make some soup and they can obviously be left in the ground over winter and just pull them when you want and like the Swiss chard, that can be left over winter as well. I actually grew Swiss chard last year and left it over winter. I didn't cover it. I didn't protect it from the frosts or anything. And it was fantastic. It, like, it was amazing. But this is looking a little bit sorry for itself. So I might take all the all the sort of deadish leaves off and tidy it up a bit. But that should be fine. Obviously, if, you get re- if we get a really, really hard frost or snow, I might come up and cover it because we didn't get snow last year. Um, and that's it for this side I will move on to the fruit cage even though it's the most embarrassing part of the allotment so this is the fruit cage (laughs) it's not really a cage really yet I still haven't managed to put the netting on I need to make these battens a little bit taller yet so I can actually walk into it but I've got all the netting and I've got all the wood I just haven't had the time to do it And of course, it's not really been much of a rush because there's no fruit anymore. So there's not been a rush to get the net up, but I would really like to do it January, February, just so it's ready for next year. Um, But everything's dormant now. The raspberries actually lasted until a couple of weeks ago. There were still raspberries on there and they've done really well. This was their first year. Now I put six canes in there but only four of them came up but they produced so much. I mean 
it wasn't a lot <laughs> because obviously it was their first year but every time I came up the allotment I was managing to get like a handful of raspberries which was perfect for me because I could just scoff them <laughs> on the day so that was really nice and I'll, what I do with the raspberries is I cut them all to ground level in around February um, but that's about it for them and what I might do is try and buy a couple more canes just to fill in those gaps and hopefully next year I'll have a lot more raspberries <laughs> so the gooseberries they've been dormant I didn't really get many gooseberries this year because this is their first year and then the black currants I didn't get I don't think I got any black currants from them because I think the birds ate them because <laughs> obviously there was no net on um, and two of them are one year old two of them are two years old so I didn't really get a lot from them but hopefully next year now there's still three rows of Swiss chard in the middle. I've sort of just let that go. <laughs> because I had four rows over there and because it was fresher, I just kept picking from that row and this row just got forgotten about. So yet again, the chickens would have come in handy because they obviously would have demolished the Swiss chard. Um, but what I would really love to do, because this area just looks such a mess, I'm so embarrassed by it. <laughs> but like I said, I haven't had the time really to weed it I've just been focusing on other things like getting the grapevine in and harvesting and just things like that I just all the weeding's gone to the back of my mind but I do really want to get on top of it just because it looks so messy and I don't like it um but this has been sort of like the dumping area for all the weeds that I've been pulling in other places because obviously I cleared the pond area so I've just dumped those weeds there so it does look horrible it looks really horrible but I would really love to just spend the weekend just clearing this area and what I would really like to do actually is to clear it completely weed it obviously not clear the fruit bushes but clear the weeds clear the Swiss chard and then what I would love to do is to lay some bark down now I don't know I probably need to read into it a bit more but I just think it would look a lot tidier, it would look a lot neater and obviously I wouldn't need to weed it if I laid down some suppressing fabric first and then put the bark on top and it would just look a lot nicer and it would be less trouble for me because I wouldn't have to weed it and so that's the plans for the fruit cage and it's really embarrassing, I hate looking at that area um, obviously the pond, I cleared the pond of all the wildflowers I've put in a grapevine it's a a red, seed, a red seedless variety called Flame. Um, I'm really excited to see how that grows. Obviously it'll be like four or five years until I get grapes from it, but hopefully it grows. So I've left the two verbena plants in because obviously they're perennial. I might cut them down. Um, so obviously next year they can grow back, but I really love the verbena this year. It's, it's been so popular with the bees and the butterflies. Um, and I just loved it as well, it's lovely. The only other two things there are the two rose bushes which which have flowered crazy and there's actually still one purple rose on there which I'm just amazed about um, but yet again they all need pruning um, and hopefully now that all the other jobs are done I can just focus on weeding and pruning and just getting everything up together now and I actually need to buy something to put in the pond because I came up uh, today because there was a really really heavy frost um, and the pond was iced over so I need to put like a ball or something in there um. and I was a little bit worried because when I cleared the area I didn't see any frogs for ages um, but I noticed a frog head poking out the water a couple of days ago so it, it cheered me up a bit because I thought I'd lost all my frogs because there were about six living in that pond and then I cleared the area and then I didn't see any for ages so I was worried that I scared them off but I did see one in there, so hopefully they're just sort of hibernating now. Hopefully they're hibernating in the little log pile I made them. <laughs> um, but that's about it. That's the whole allotment. Not a lot's going on. And it all looks messy and horrible. Um, but hopefully now that I've I sort of stocked up on, on filming, <laughs> so there's a few videos to go out, um, hopefully I can sort of crack on with the boring jobs that nobody wants to see, like weeding. Um, but that's it for my allotment, so let's go and have a peek at my dad's plot.
Right, I'm going to give you a little tour of my dad's plot because we actually haven't had a little update from it since August, so it's been a couple of months now. It's all looking very neat and tidy anyway. Where is he? Ah, there he is. Hello! Hello! Couldn't see you then, couldn't find you. I was hiding. We just come for a update. Oh right. Of your plot. Okay, yeah. Yeah. When was the last time? August, August was it? Yeah. August. Yeah, right, well not a lot's happened since then, I suppose. Obviously it's all been harvested. Um I've just uh, I think a couple of weeks ago I finished digging over the plot, just leave it rough. Yeah, it's for the tidy, winter, didn't it? Which obviously the the frost and the, if we have some snow will break it down. Mm, it's frosty now, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's the still. coldest day we've had this year, isn't yeah, it? It's the, the first frost, isn't it? 6th of December yeah and it's the coldest day yeah um, at least we've had a bit of frost on the parsnips now which uh, mm. will improve the taste the flavour and the cow as well um, so at least that sort of happened That's, they should be great um, but where should we start right um, this is my greenhouse oh yes the greenhouse would you believe it that pile there um, I think in the last video I said I was going to have a polytunnel just here yeah 10 by 12 um, the only problem is Tommy buy the scaffold poles to put in the ground in the water pipe to make the hoops and then expensive. you buy the polythene it's quite expensive yeah um, this is a 10 by 12 greenhouse and this cost 60 pounds second hand all right we had to we had to take it apart and that, that took uh, best part of a day in the pouring yeah. rain in the it? rain yeah yeah but um so yeah that's going to go there i think it's going to be sort of round about here uh, right the way over to there and over to there and down there probably I think it comes to about here just there and then the rhubarb patch is going to go across there yeah you're going to have a couple of raised beds aren't you yeah I'm going to have a raised bed for the rhubarb because this is probably the wettest area yeah. on the plot because it all drains this way so I'm going to have a raised bed put plenty of grit in the soil just to improve the drainage and I'm going to sort of dig a uh, underground drainage down to the ditch Lovely. in the back there so that should be nice. Got the door to the greenhouse there. Oh yeah. S uh, the the light of the skylights over there, openings. And your shed. And my shed, yes. Last time we saw this, this was light blue. Yeah, it's and blue. And it was over on, on my old plot. We've moved it. We painted it green. Matches your coat. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty spawn. Yeah. Plus it's it's sort of camouflaged against yeah, the hedge. Yeah, it does against the hedge. So it yeah. doesn't stick out so much. Put all the slabs down. Yeah, you moved. We moved all the slabs over, didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. Um, storage area at the back, got to put some more slabs down there yet, yeah. um, which should be arriving any day now. Um, I've got three water butts around the back. Which You've got frost aren't... on the bench. Oh yeah. Can't sit yeah. down. Well this is all in the shade this bit. Yeah. Three water butts, going to have two Hang linked on, the together. Sun's in the way. Get out of the way of the sun. This is for the compost yeah, area which we spoke about in the last video. Oh, These the pallets. pallets. Yeah. yeah. I've got three water butts, so I'm going to have two here linked together, one off the gutters, one I'll put the gutters up. Yep. One's going to go on the greenhouse. So uh, I said the other day, we better get them linked up because we're going to miss all the yeah, all the water. all the wet weather in the winter. Look at that frost on there. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Yeah, I bought these from home, ready to go in my leaf mould container, which I'm, I'm just uh, about to build, which um, we'll speak about in another video. Yeah, we'll cover that. Yeah. But yeah, I've got some tulips in there. Oh yeah, you put the tulips of tubs in the tulips. Pots. There's all the glass for the greenhouse as well. On the beds, um, we've just got parsnips. Parsnips. As I say, they've just had their first frost, so it's sort of they're looking a little bit. Sorry now, but there's some nice ones in there. We've had a couple already, haven't we? Yeah. They're sort of about that long. Yeah, they were lovely. Yeah, yeah. Still got some carrots. This is a little bit wind damaged. But yeah, that, they've uh, been fine as well, haven't they, the yeah, carrots? Yeah, and this did a great job of protecting it from the carrot fly. Yeah. It's Perfect. getting lower and lower because the wind keeps snapping them off. <laughs> yeah, it's got a little I'll bit of get some new there. bamboos. Um, this was where all the summer cabbages were, which they're all gone now, and the cauliflowers. I've dug the centre bit over. These are Swedes. Got some calabrese up there. So that's all Swedes? Yeah. Yeah, they're not too fat, 
quite long, aren't they? Yeah, quite long. I don't know if that's the variety, but they're, they're nice. You've dug it all over? Yeah. And then what are these? They're calabrese. We've had a few of those. Oh, there's another one there sprouting out. Um, they they were in a little bit late because they're meant to be sort of summer, but they're still going. This is purple sprout for next year. These were quite small plants, weren't Can't they? Can't really see them. Obviously, uh, and they were put in a bit late. I didn't like to throw them away, so I put them in. But the main yeah. purple sprout is over in the other bed. <coughs> These are the main purple sprout for next year. And they're coming on really nice, really strong, sturdy plants. I've and actually staked. I've actually staked them because if you leave them like, I mean, they're, they're quite big plants and they will get blown over. Got some January King cabbages there coming on along nicely. One or two are ready now. Uh, some kale. Yeah, you can't Cavalo. see anything. Kale. You can't see anything. No, I'll have to. I'll, I'll, I'll get in there in a minute. Yeah. Curly cow, flower sprouts. I don't know if you can see through there. A bit better. They seem mm. to be. Coming no, up. I'll I'll film little clips in a minute and put yeah. it on. And the Brussels sprouts. Bit. We've had some Brussels sprouts already, but there should be some for Christmas. And then a nicely dug bed. Nicely dug. Yep. We got the leeks there. They didn't do too well. They had a little bit of rust with them, but they seem to be um, picking up now. There's a few there not not too happy. Gone to seed that one. But there's there's a few quite good. Yeah, there's a few good ones in yeah. there. And once you strip all the all this outer off, it, yeah. they're, they're quite nice. Aren't they? But they're quite small, aren't they? Yeah, some of them are, but so, uh, not too bad. Yeah, a few problems with those this year. And then you're going to get some manure, aren't you? Yeah, that's going to go on those two beds there. Because next year that's where the beans are going. Um, the beans and the peas, French beans. And these two beds. Yeah, beans in here. Then these will be potatoes, these two beds. They'll be potatoes. Cabbages and brassicas in the end too. So it's ah. all gonna rotate like yeah. that, go that way around. So I'm just gonna manure these. I'm gonna get some and just lay it on top, three or four inches deep, and let the worms do their job over winter. And then in the spring, just fork it in a little mm, bit. Lovely. If there's then that way you get it in the top sort of four or five inches which does the obviously gets to the roots so that's about it really that's about it yeah you need to sort out the fence don't you yeah i've taken the yeah. fence and i might i might leave it like that i don't know i don't know nice and easy to, to get into i'll have to uh, see how it goes um the the old fences there i was gonna put it up again but uh a little bit tangled, isn't it? A little bit tangled. This is a little bit of a mess at the moment, but th this is all waiting to go to the tip. You'll be doing the greenhouse next year, will you? Spring? January, yeah. Yeah, yeah January. Yeah, yeah. Because it's not, it's not going to be a heated greenhouse. It's going to no. be a cold greenhouse, mainly for, for growing veg. Yeah. Um, just like a pol just like a polytunnel, really. And the heated greenhouse we'll have at home. For seedlings. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, oh, that's exciting, yeah. isn't it? It will, it will look yeah. so much different when the greenhouse is up, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you say it's a little bit cold today. Mm, very cold. I just, I just popped up to do the leaf mould container and just have a look around. Nice and sunny. We're having a roast dinner tomorrow, so maybe we can try some parsnips yeah. and sprouts. Yeah. And hopefully we'll have some sprouts for Christmas dinner, will we? From yours? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's some coming along. Very productive still, I think. Yeah. Compared to some of the other pots. <laughs> well, I like to think so. <laughs> um, each year you get sort of more experience. And yeah. Obviously, it gets better and better. And um, didn't have very much luck with the cauliflowers this year, but uh, hopefully, I'll try a few other things. Yeah, out, you've got to try things, haven't you? Yeah. It's all trial and error. Yeah. You yeah. find out things which you. Yeah. Which are good to grow, don't you, in the yeah. soil and. Yeah. And obviously, if we get any snow, those nets will have to come off yeah. a bit quick. Oh, yeah. Or else it just collapse, break the bamboos and just collapse in. Um, but I think you have to keep them netted now just to keep the pigeons away. Pigeons, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, there's, no, there's obviously no cabbage white. Um, oh, no, I haven't seen any no for ages. It's too cold. But it's the pigeons, really. And the birds. 
Lovely. So that's it for the little updates of the allotments. Now there's not really a lot going on this time of year, but I hope you've enjoyed having a little look around. So thank you for watching and we'll see you all next time. Right, let's go and get a cup of tea, shall we? Yeah, lovely.